What's up, Internet? My name is Michael Cook, and this is Blue Giant Media. We're here to help you find, learn, and play the games that you love. Today, we've got Patchwork by Uwe Rosenberg and published by Mayfair Games. We're going to take a look at the general rules overview, then we're going to come back and I'm going to let you know what I do like, what I don't like, who may like, and who may not like, Patchwork. All right, we have the game set up. Each player has their five buttons. Everything is lined up around, and we start with the token next to the smallest piece. On uh, whoever is on top here, that is going to be the start player. And at any time later in the game, if someone ends up on top of the other piece, then they get to, they are still the active player. On your turn, you would get to choose one of the three pieces that is in front of the pawn, and you're going to pay the number of buttons that's shown on that piece, and then you're going to move your token the number of spaces shown by the hourglass. So uh, at, at the beginning of the game, since you start with five buttons, you can't afford any of these except for this one. So this is, since it's your turn, you will go ahead and take that one. You're going to pay three coins, or three buttons, and then you're going to place this in here, and you're going to move one, two, three. Then it's going to come over to my turn. So I could take these five buttons and take this one right here. Costs five. I can place this into my quilt and then move myself one, two, three, four, five. Since I crossed the button line, then I get to count up all of the buttons in my quilt and take that many buttons. So I have two, so I get to take two. One, two, three, four, five. That's where I should be. Now it's going to be your turn. So now you could, let's see, you can take two to get this one right here. All right, and that's going to move you one, two. And since you crossed the button line, you will get one. And since you are on top, it's still your turn again. So as you can see, it's not going to go one, two, one, you know, back and forth. It's going to go whoever is behind. There might be a situation where someone builds one of these that's going to take a lot of time for you to sew that piece into your quilt. It's going to take six for this one, six for this one. I think six might be the most. Yes. I don't see any that cost more than six. So it might be that one player is going to move way out there, you know, taking six time to put that piece into their quilt. So the other player might end up taking two or three or four different uh, pieces or turns before it gets back to that other player again. But on your turn, you're just gonna keep on choosing one of the next three, although it might reach a point like it. Uh, so for you right now, you have one button and you cannot afford any of these. So you can always pass. When you pass, you move your piece forward as many, pace, as many spaces as it takes so that you are one space in front of the other person's marker. And then you take one button for every space that you move. So you only move one space, so you're gonna get one button. Then it's going to be my turn. I can spend two buttons to get this piece right here. And whenever you get these, you are allowed to flip them however you want. And then I'm going to move myself one, and then I can no longer afford any of these, so I will pass and take one button. Then it's your turn. You can't afford any of those, so you will pass and take two buttons. Then it's going to come to me again, and I cannot take any of them. So again, I will pass one, two, and take two buttons. A little bit of an uncharacteristically slow start, but it happens. Uh, then it's going to be your turn again. You have four buttons now, so you can afford either one of these. So maybe this is one of those times where you're going to take three this rolled all over and you're going to take this one right here you're going to build this in right there and it's going to take you forward one two three four five six and since you cross the line you're going to get three buttons and you'll keep going around once somebody crosses one of these spots you get to take one of the pieces and add it into your quilt wherever it goes good for filling in a spot if you end up making a mistake somewhere along the way and you'll keep playing until somebody gets all the way, or until both players get all the way around to the middle. At the end of the game, you will add one point for every button that you have, subtract two points for every empty space 
that you have in your quilt. And then if you are able to build seven by seven exactly, so whether you're filling in a full, it doesn't have to be exactly shaped that way, but if you filled in a full seven by seven space, whether it's touching a corner or in the middle of your quilt, the first person to do so will take this token and set it next to them. That is going to be seven points at the end of the game. So again, you're gonna add up all your buttons, plus seven if you finish the seven by seven section of your quilt, and then you're going to subtract two points for every empty space. And then whoever has the most points is the winner. All right, now you should have a pretty good idea of how Patchwork plays, so now let's get into what I do like about the game. First of all, I'm a big fan of two-player games. I like short games as well. I like games that when you're at a game party, maybe you show up late, maybe you know someone is going to show up late. It's nice to be able to come in, play a quick game that's uh, still very engaging while you're waiting for maybe a whole group to get together and be ready for maybe what you might call a main event or just a bigger game or whatever you might be hoping to play. This is a, a great game to kind of fit that mold. It's also great for maybe you just get the kids put to bed. I know this happens for me sometimes. And you just want to have something that's light. And this fits the bill for that too. Other things that I like about the game, that button and time economy, how you got those both both limited resources that you're trying to balance and utilize. I think that's really, really interesting. Uh, where you're trying to say, okay, well I've got enough buttons for this, but I really don't have the time or I don't want to spend that much time on it. Or do you try and get buttons on there first? So you just focus on getting the big pieces to fill in the spaces to try and get the 7x7 seven seven first. There's just, for something that's so simple, there is a lot of depth in the game. And I think that's really great. I love those games that are really simple, but there's a lot of depth to them. And this really checks that box for me. Other things that I really like about the game is um, I like Tetris. <laughs> I, I like the kind of puzzly aspect of it, literally puzzly. I like how you're trying to sit there and say, okay, well, I could get that one there and this one here. And if you want to plan ahead, you can look around the circle and see, okay, well, roughly in a couple turns, that depending how I depending on how I play my cards, I can kind of set it up so my opponent has to make me or give me the choice of the piece that I need to fit this spot exactly. So that's really cool, you can plan ahead fairly well. I think that's really good. Things that I do not like about the game. The theme is really dry. Uh, it's not that I, I, I've said before that I'm not really turned on or off that much by themes, but this particular theme is very dry. It doesn't keep me from playing it, but it is very dry. Uh, so take that for what it's worth. It's one of my only, <laughs> actually it's the only thing that I'm going to mention today that I don't like about the game. It's just, it's a good game. It's a solid, solid game. So who may like the game? Some people are a really big fan of, again, two-player games, and also games that have that kind of Euro style to it where you're managing resources. This is going to fit the bill for you. This is going to make you feel good inside. <laughs> so um, you may also be a fan of those unorthodox themes. I know there's a lot of people who really love it when they see a theme that is not overdone. So this is not a theme that is overdone. It is a relatively unique, if not completely unique, theme in current hobby board gaming. So take that for what it's worth. Things, uh, or who may not like this game? People who won't like this game, again, we're going to come right back to it, is theme. It's really polarizing if you can't already you know, tell. Um, the theme is going to either, for the most part, make you really excited or really bothered or some of you might fall into the meh but you're you're usually going to fall into one of those three camps you're not going to kind of be like yeah I, I like it you're going to say yeah that's brilliant or eh take it or leave it or you're going to hate it so some people just might not be able to get over it um, the other thing some people may not like the fact that it's a two player only game some people may want a more in-depth experience people may want uh, just to be able to play with more people for that, there are many other games that I could recommend. Uh, there's Baron Park, which is great for four players, or up to four players. There's um, the whole, also by Uwe Rosenberg, you've got the uh, Spring Meadow and Cottage Garden and blanking on the other one right now. But there's a lot of other options out there if you want to play with more players or maybe get a little bit of a different experience within that kind of Tetris thing. Other people who may not like the game are those who are kind of spatially challenged. Maybe you just aren't really good at fitting things in. You know, whenever you pack a suitcase, you just never manage to fit everything in there. This might just not be your cup of tea, and that's fine. But hopefully that is going to give you a better idea of why you may or may not like the game.
Thank you so much for watching my review of Patchwork. If I missed anything or if you have any comments, please let me know in the comments section. I'd love to have some dialogue and connect with you about Patchwork or any other games. And if you're looking for my playthrough or rules overview of Patchwork, keep an eye in the description section where you will also find a link to macronovagames.com where you can buy Patchwork and many other great games. Until next time, I want to thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like what you see. And until next time, have a great day.